Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be working on minimum number of days to disconnect island. And in this one you're given a grid where one represents um, land and zero represents water and an island is a four directionally connected group of ones. So this basically just means that um, ones can only be connected horizontally or vertically. They can't be connected diagonally. So like this would not be connected but this would be or if there's like a one over here this would be connected and so on. Um, and it's connected if you have exactly one island, otherwise disconnected. In one day, you're allowed to change any single cell from a land to a water, return the minimum number of days to disconnect the grid. So in this, um, there's a bunch of ways you can do it, but basically you just take off a diagonal, so that'll be two days, and then it's disconnected because it can't be connected diagonally. And here, you can't just get rid of one, because if you get rid of one, it's still an island. So you have to get rid of both of them. So there's kind of a few cases here, and the cases are not one island to start off with, or one island. And we can check for this pretty easily, right, with like some DFS or something. So if it or if it's already not an island to begin with, then we're basically done. So this is like pretty easy to do. So we're just gonna focus on if it's one island, then what do we need to do? And so if there's one island, um basically there's going to be like a bunch of shapes but one thing i thought of that didn't ended up not working is for every single cell write down the number of cells it's connected to and then and then figure out like the least number of connections and that would be my answer so like for example this is connected to two 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 so i'd be like okay well let's get rid of two then but that doesn't really work because of a case like this so imagine these ones are your island and so on. So here, everything has two or more connections, but actually if I turn this into a zero, then these are disconnected. And I only broke one connection, even though every single thing has more than one connection here. So you can't just like count the number of connections. But what you can realize is no matter what the shape of your island, it's going to take at most two breaks to do this because so this is the case where it only took one where even though everything had a lot of connections but imagine like any other shape like let's say this is all ones you're gonna have so it's gonna take at most the minimum number of connections you have in here to make the break because like if this has two connections we can just get rid of two connections. We can just get rid of those two connections and then this won't be connected to anything. And in any shape, the border of your shape, if you think about like the things on the outside, those things are, there's gonna be some point like if in a matrix that's gonna have only two or less connections, right? So if you have a square, these borders will have two. So you can just say like, okay, well, those have two. I'll just turn these two into water. And now this is not connected. I just get rid of those connections. But like I showed you earlier, it might be less than that, but at most it's gonna be two. And there's no way to draw a shape where um, the like some outside piece has more than two. Because if it had three, that means it would it would like keep growing out and then the, and then eventually you're gonna hit a corner. Like right, like like even if you get rid of some things, maybe maybe we have something like this. We still have um, we still have things with two or less. Right, so here, for example, this has two, this has two, this has two, and so on. So whatever you have on the corner um, of your matrix is always going to have two. So you're basically going to have a couple things. So you're either going to have one change or two changes, and it's going to be two maximum. So now that you know that, what we can actually do is, like, let's say we have this island or whatever. But like, first we check for one island. If there's more, then we're done. Um, how do we check if it's one or two now? And this is basically our problem. Like, how do we do that? Well, we can just check for one. And once we check for one and it's not one, then it has to be two. And this is 30 by 30. So there is like an algorithm called like, I think like Tarjan's algorithm or something that checks for like bridges between graphs. And then like, you you can basically check like, if I get rid of that bridge that that will disconnect the graph. But I think I said before, I'm not a huge fan of like learning random algorithms to solve one problem. So we're not gonna do that. So we're gonna use like something that is less optimal in terms of runtime, but is something that like you should be able to come up with. And that's basically gonna be what we can do is we can just say like, okay, well, 
let's just take everything on the island and let's just one at a time turn it into a water and then just count how many how many components like how many um so or not how many components but how many islands we have then so basically we'd say like okay this is this is a one let's turn it into a zero and let's just do a dfs from somewhere like here and how many did we get and if we didn't get so imagine like we have um x x like squares in our one island and and we already determined this was one island right from earlier if it's more than one island we just return done and we don't have to worry about it so if it's all one connected island we can figure out how many squares we have then if we turn one of those squares into a water we should be able to dfs from any square and reach all other squares right so if we just get rid of if we turn one into a water and and it didn't break anything then we're going to be able to visit everything else so if we have x squares in our one island once we turn one of them into a water we should have x minus one squares so all we can all we have to do is and also notice that um every because because we only have one island every square is connected to at least one square so what we can do is we can just go square by square and we can just say like okay starting at this square let's turn this into a zero let's find one square that it's connected to we can just check up le up left right down find one of them that's a one so like this one let's do a dfs and then how many squares did we get? So if we do a DFS here, we're gonna connect to all these and this will be X minus one. And then we turn it back into a one and then we go to the next one, we say, okay, let's turn this into a zero. Let's do a DFS from one of its neighbors, just one. Um, you don't wanna do the DFS from multiple neighbors because if the whole thing is still connected when this is a zero, that means it should all be connected. And so basically here, what you're gonna realize is there is nothing with only one connection. So um, you can't you can't change this with one change. This wouldn't be possible. But if you had something like this, for example, at least I, I think you can't. Yeah, if you had something like this, then this would be possible. You could also like do some optimizations. Like you can still record the number of connections. And if one island has one connection, like or one one square has one connection, then like I said, your result is going to be the at most min number of connections right and the min number of connections is either going to be or the min number of connections is either going to be one or two and so if if anything has one connection then you know for sure that the answer is going to be one so you can't optimize that and do that in my code but you can't do that because here like this has only one connection so you could just say like well if this has one connection there's got to be a way to get rid of something to disconnect it and there is a way so that's like a slight optimization, but not super concerned with that. Just worry about the like overall thing. Um, yeah. And so basically what we can do here is we just like turn, turn one of them into a zero. We do a DFS from, from another one and we just check. And in this case, what would happen is once we get to this one and we turn it into a zero and let's say we do a DFS from here, we're going to visit all of these, but then we're not going to visit this guy. So we know we have our answer. And so this is going to be, so for every single cell that's an, that's a, in the island, which is m by n, we're going to do a DFS, which is m by n again, right? So it's going to be m squared by n squared. We can, I can actually probably add this optimization by checking um, this like min thing, min connections. And then we can say like, if the min connections is one, just return one, don't do, we don't, like we know for sure it's one. I guess we can add that to the code as well. We'll do that at the end. So let's take a look at the code and the code's kind of lengthy, but hopefully that makes sense. All we have to do is just check if there's one island, if there is, turn each one into a zero, check if the rest of it's connected, which is the DFS from any one of them. And then if it's not one change, like if we tried turning each one of these into a zero and it didn't work, then we know we have to make two changes and we know we have to make two changes for sure because there's gonna be some corner or something with two connections. Okay, so here's the code. So we have rows, columns, directions, pretty standard. And then we have our number of islands and are visited. So first we count the number of islands that we have and we do a DFS. And if we have more than one island, we're just done or less than one island. I didn't talk about one case as well. Um, so just have a small. So if we have um, two or less 
squares and they're connected uh there's going to be that number of squares that we have to remove because that was the example too so like if we remove this guy this is still one island so if you have two connected no matter how you have to remove both of them to have no islands and if you have one then you have to remove that one so if you have two or less squares that make up your island we can also just return that that number so we count up our number of land cells, and then if we have less than two, less than or equal to two, we just return that number. Yeah. We could also uh, do that, I guess, in the visited. So whenever we add to the visited, we could also do it there. But either way, like these are some small things. Okay. Then basically all we do is we just try to we just try to get rid of um, one cell at a time. So we go through our whole grid again. If it has been visited, which means it's um it's an island. I guess technically you don't even need to do this. You can just say if it's one, then you can like, then you can do something else. That would also be fine. Um yeah, but basically if it if it's visited or if it's one or whatever, um you just do that. And so yeah, I guess we could just say like if grid. So you could also go through like your visitor array instead, but this is fine too. So grid row column equals one. Then we get like, we get our directions and then, and then we basically turn our, so, so the other thing is we only need, like I said, um, when we turn one of these into a zero, it's guaranteed there will be at least one neighbor because if you have one Island, everything is connected. So, so basically we just look for one neighbor. So we try like here, if we get this one, we'll DFS from here. If it's not here, we'll try here. If it's not here, we'll try here and so on. So that's basically what we do here is we just try to find one neighbor. If we do find one neighbor, then we make our cell zero. We make a new visited array and then we call DFS with that. And then we count up the number of cells we visited. So I, I this definitely could be optimized for sure. And I'll probably optimize it before I submit the code, but basically we just count up the number of cells we visited. And then if that number is not equal to our original number minus one, um, then we return, then we return one because, because we weren't able to visit everything, right? So if we turn like this into a zero and we try to do a DFS from here, we weren't able to visit everything, then we can just return one. And that's basically, like I said, if you have X squares total, you should be able to visit X minus one square. You should be able to visit everything other than this. Uh, and then you just change it back into one and you keep doing that for every other cell. And then if you weren't able to do that, just return two and basically fast function. So just add to the visited. Yeah, I'll probably clean this up a bit and I'll also add the check for, um, I'll also add the check for, uh, if you only have one connection, just return one right away because that, that's always true. Unless the length of your thing is two or less. So if you have this or this, return um, the length of the thing. And then if it's more than two items and you only have one connection like this, for example, it's always gonna be one to get rid of because you just take the thing that has one connections and you remove its connection. So you just do something like that. Or if you have some big thing, um, like I said, like something like this, you just say like, okay, this has, um, this has one connection, let's just get rid of it. And then it's disconnected. So, but hopefully that makes sense. That edge case that I showed you that you can't just count up the number of connections. So you can't just do an unbind solution because sometimes uh, something is a bridge. So you have to also look for a bridge and that's more difficult. There's probably other ways to do it, but yeah. And I, and I don't think memorizing the Tarjan's algorithm thing. So the Tarjan's algorithm is um, M by N. I don't think memorizing it is like worth for one problem because you can solve problems without it almost always. Yeah, in this case, you like I said, you can do a bunch of optimizations, but this is um, m squared n squared because we're basically traversing, and then for every single cell, we're turning into a zero and running a DFS. Which you can imagine, if this whole thing is ones, that would be the worst case because like we turn a cell into a zero, run a DFS, find everything. Turn this into a zero, run a DFS, find everything, and so on. So that would be m, m squared n squared. And then yeah, space is m by n. Oh yeah, so I'll probably clean this up a bit and submit the code, but the, the main idea is here and it is not super easy to code. So I definitely would recommend to code it. And like, this, is, this also is a good one too, because it's, because it's kind of long. Um, it's a good one to like actually practice coding something that looks pretty decent and stuff. It's really easy to make it super messy. 
Um, but yeah, that's going to be all for this one. Hopefully you liked it. And if you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.